Welcome to our candidates interview where we bring candidates for town offices directly to your home. This interview is brought to you by Lake Cam, Lakeville's public education and government access television stations. My name is Katie Goodfellow and I currently serve as town moderator. With me is Joanne Upham who will interview our candidates today. Our guest is Ms. Leah Fabian who's running for re-election for the select board Joanne and I drew the questions today from past debates and interviews, as well as considered ones recently submitted by town residents. To begin our interview, Ms. Fabian will have three minutes to introduce herself, including why she decided to run for re-election. She'll then be permitted five minutes to answer each question. She does not need to use the entire time. After Ms. Upham has asked all nine questions, Ms. Fabian will be given two minutes to make a closing statement. So welcome, Ms. Fabian. Thank you. Would you please share with our voters a little bit about yourself and your reasons for running this year? So um, as you mentioned, I am the uh, incumbent. So I've been a member of the select board since 2019. Um, and it's been a very busy uh, three years, including a pandemic that none of us expected. Um, but I've been a member of this community for over 30 years. And um, all the time my kids were being educated through Lakeville schools, I followed them along through each school and I volunteered in the schools and I you know, volunteered for Boy Scouts and for um, Little League. So I sort of spent my time volunteering through that. And now that they're older, you know, um, I believe this is a fantastic community to live in. And I, I believe that, you know, this is my way of giving back for having so many great years living, my husband and I living here and having a great life. Um, and, uh, it's just something that I feel I can do to, to give back. Um, uh, again, uh, we've been here for over 30 years. We've educated our kids through the school systems here and both have gone on to have very successful careers. Um, I, uh, uh, I do like the ruralness of the community. Um, it's just, it's a great community and that's why I feel like I need to be doing this again over the course of the three years. I've started some very important work, um, which um, I can maybe sum up at the end, but it has to do with the flooding issues we had. It has to do with uh, the weed removal at the Namaskit. It has to do with open space. And I just feel like I have work that's unfinished and I need to continue on with that. Thank you. Yep. Okay. My turn on to the questions. Okay. Yes. The position on the select board involves working collaboratively with other members of the board and with other boards, committees, and groups in town. How would you describe your relationship with other board members and other committees during your last term as a member of the select board? How do you envision working on the board and with other committees in the future? And please describe how you work with others in times of agreement and in disagreement. Um, so that's... Uh, that's a good question because uh, things can be going along just fine with the board and then all of a sudden one issue can find the board split. I've actually attended a couple of um, seminars that the Mass Municipal Association has put on and you know how to for that specific reason, how to gain, you know, how to gain either a consensus or, you know, work on compromise. I think one of my life skills actually is, is just that. Um, I actually like the role of chair and being able to, you know, get everyone the opportunity to give their opinion um, so that everyone can be heard and then, you know, the have debate. And um, I think, I think committees don't have to be made up of all like members. I think they're always, it's always good to have someone, you know, that, that has a different opinion because I think that's where the best decisions come from. Mm -hmm. My current relationship right now on all my boards is, I would say, pretty, pretty good. I would be, you know, I would be trying to work a little more difficult on my own, on my own, um, my own self if I felt as though I was having a real controversial issue with someone. 
Um, so every now and then on our own board, since the beginning when I got onto the board, there was a difference of opinion, but even if I differed in opinion, I tried to just keep it on that particular issue and not carry that negative feeling or, you know, um, difference of opinion through to the next issue. I would say, okay, for me, this isn't, you know, this isn't um, a little conflict here, but then I put the conflict behind me and we move on to make to the next decision. Um, as far as my work on, um, I was on the Board of Assessors for four years and we also, you know, had some uh, difficult decisions to make. We mostly all got along. So that was a good experience for me. I didn't really come across much conflict. So I had had some municipal experience behind me. So I had those skills to fall back on. Um, but even now I do a lot of work with the APC, which is the Assawamsett Pond Complex. And we have all kinds of people participating from engineers to scientists to researchers. And I, I have to say, you know, we, we get along really well. We're always, you know, and, and if there is a difference of opinion, I'm always one of the first people that says, okay, let's stop. Let's see what this person feels, how that person feels, and let's try to move forward. So for me, it's, it's very important that we all try to get along. And I've used this phrase with several chairs uh, that chair some of our bigger our boards that do you know, um, some really important work. And I say, at the end of the day, we all have to want to get along because if we don't, then we can't get good work done for the town. The town has to be what comes first. So we all need to remember that so that we can come to a decision. It may not be a decision that everyone is elated about, but we should all think of the town first when we're trying to get along. Okay, yep. good answer. Thank you. Um, the next question, select board members must make difficult decisions that promote the general welfare and in the best interest of the town. Can you describe a situation on the select board when you face when you were faced with a difficult decision or issue and relate how you addressed it? Well, it's kind of hard to talk about the year 2020 without <laughs> mentioning COVID. True. So I just happened to be chair of the select board in 2020. And even though towns prepare, they have emergency planning, all kinds of emergency planning, you know, there's so much that everyone is responsible for trying to, we try to anticipate the next emergency or the next, you know, difficulty, but nothing, you know, prepared us for, we did not have a rule book, let's say, for when COVID-19 affected us all. And I, I don't, you know, now it's changed a little bit, but at the beginning it was very scary. And that was a very difficult time for me because I sort of felt the weight of the town on my shoulders. Um, and even though we had great support staff and, you know, uh, other board members as the chair, I still felt as though I had to jump right in. So before uh, the closures, the flatten the curve closures went into place, um, I called a meeting with you know the fire chief, the police chief, the current, uh, the then town administrator, the board of health agent, and the building commissioner, and I said, who's in charge of inspectional services, and I said, what are we looking at? What have you each heard in your respective fields? Is this going to be as big as they say? Are we prepared? So that was probably um, one of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make as a select person. Um, and just dealing with that whole thing, I, I walked out of that meeting, I walked into that meeting almost petrified and walked out of that meeting thinking, okay, we're gonna be okay because we have such strong department head leadership our two chiefs were already working on PPE, um, on, on acquiring PPE. Um, you know, our board of health person was already just trying to get whatever information he could. Um, so that was one of the 
most difficult and scary decisions. And at the end, when not the end because we're still going through COVID, but at some point when we could breathe a little bit of sigh of relief, I was like, wow, I don't know that I could have ever prepared myself for the pressure, stress, or responsibility that I felt, but I think we did okay. I okay. think we did okay. Would you do anything differently looking back? Um, would I do anything differently? Oh, you know, honestly, we took one day at a time mm. and we made decisions taking into account the state rules, the state, what the state was putting out for us. Um, we kept trying to evaluate those decisions based on what was good for Lakeville versus some of those decisions um, were, you know, best for what, for like the cities. So in all honesty, I think we did okay. I think, um, I think we did okay. We jumped right in. We hired the two firefighters to make sure we had coverage if people needed ambulances so that our own fire department wouldn't go down. Um, so I think we did okay. I can't say I would change anything. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Uh, next question. What do you see as the biggest challenges to the town's budget over the next three to five years? Oh, the town's budget. Actually, I think the budget's in a pretty good place right now. Okay. Prior to three weeks ago and what's going on in world news. Um, again, when COVID started, we were all in the same situation. We didn't, we were in a pretty decent place, um, but we didn't know how COVID was going to affect everything long term. So today, that's my concern. I'm concerned for, you know, I think our 2023 budget is, is, is a good budget. Um, I think it's solid. I think it's strong. I think our, you know, debt to revenue ratio is right where it should be. I've had so many talks about that with our town accountant and our, you know, town administrator. Um, I think we're in a good situation. My biggest concern, though, is what may happen down the road, which is almost out of our control. Right. So we have to be ready to... Sort of like COVID. Yes, sort of, of like control. COVID, exactly. Yep. Um, otherwise, um, we, do, we do know we may have some big purchases, some big things coming up. So it's just, you know, between schools and between our own capital capital issues, capital needs. So, you know, but again, I do think that right now we're in a really good situation with where the budget is, um, especially too with the lending and the borrowing. We have a really good borrowing rate. So if we had to borrow for something, you know, we, we would be able to do that pretty, pretty well. So it, I don't think it would affect us negatively. So we're really in a good, as far as I'm, as far as I see things, we're, you and know. And that includes into the future, into five years. You're um, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Conservation and responsible environmental stewardship are important to many Lakeville voters. If the CPA, which is the Community, Community Preservation, Preservation Act, Act for yep. anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> is approved by Lakeville voters on April 4th, what role, if any, do you envision for the select board? Um, well, I believe the select board is the one that appoints the members that will actually be on the committee. Okay. So uh, just like we appoint many, uh, almost every other board, we solicit interest. We put out a request for anyone that's interested. Um, there are certain positions, I believe there has to be certain pos certain people represented. I don't different, different, different boards and committees. Right, um, you know, like someone from the open space committee. Um, so of course we have to fulfill those positions first, but I do think there's a few community um, positions that are in there. So we would solicit, you know, people that are interested. Um, but, uh, otherwise, um, we would be responsible for bringing, um, recommendations from the CPA to town meeting. So they would, those recommendations would have to get to a town meeting mm -hmm. so that we could, you know, so the town could vote. Um, so, you know, there's some work for the select board to do, but it's not like, you know, not a responsibility, um, not, not a huge, unless, you know, one of the select board members or myself, um, you know, I wouldn't mind being on that committee at all. If the opportunity arises, um, you know, if I, if I'm on that committee myself, then of course there would be more work individually right. for me, 
but um, you know, so it's just like any other committee, you know, the Board of Selectmen is sort of the overseer and you know, we have to, you know, and we do that through to also through the town administrator. So the town administrator will often give us, you know, updates on this is what the, you know, this committee's doing or that committee's doing. So, you know, and of course I know so many people, I probably In spend, town, you yeah. probably already would know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I spend about 20 hours a week on the phone, so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Next question. What is your opinion of the continued development of marijuana-based businesses in Lakeville? How do you feel about the current laws surrounding it? And do you see a need to change or amend any of the laws? Uh, very timely question, because when marijuana first came to Lakeville, so of course that was after the state, um, you know, we passed those laws as yeah. citizens of Massachusetts. Um, so we sort of just had, you know, um, an open sort of, you know, people would come to us and they would ask us for a host community agreement. And I think, you know, at one point we had eight host community agreements. Um, people would just come to us and then we would go through the process of having the, you know, social, the um, public outreach that we needed to do. Um, host community agreements were, um, were uh, negotiated with these companies and um, the previous board of selectmen had chosen a different method where they were charging per pound. So all these years later, which you know is about four or five years later in some cases, we've made a lot of changes. So when marijuana was first approved in Lakeville, when it first started coming to Lakeville, it was um, to be put only in industrial land. Well, again, through experience, um, we were finding that there were some industrial pieces of property that were very close to residential neighborhoods. So, you know, um, I can absolutely see why someone who's in a residential neighborhood wouldn't want especially, any kind of- Especially a family. Yeah, especially a family, any kind of big facility next to them, whether yeah. it was marijuana or something else. So since that time, I believe it was last year at the, the annual town meeting, we created the overlay district, which now means a marijuana place growing facility or retail can go only in the industrial park in Lakeville mm -hmm. or on route 44. So we've done away with that, you know, industrial next to residential. Um, also, we have renegotiated. So uh, the board that was made up of myself, Rich LaCamera and Brian Day had made a decision that we were going to, going forward, we would try to renegotiate some of those agreements, um, not to be per pound, but to be 3%, which is what the Cannabis Commission says that the towns can charge because we felt that you know, um, we were leaving some money on the table that mm -hmm. the town could have benefited from. So we've we've begun doing that um, almost as as a policy, and of course, the selectmen are the policy making board for the town. So, you know, um, that was that was sort of our goal. Um, lastly, and most recently, um, I you know I spent a lot of time studying, researching, talking to town council, and in many towns, some towns, many towns, what they do is it's almost like a bid process. So they put out like a bid. We say, okay, so right now for the next X number of months, we're gonna entertain applications. But these applications are much more, um, much more- uh, Involved? Yeah, involved. And we want, you know, to know, you know, who you are. We want references. We want a copy of your, you know, prospective lease, potential lease. The, we want to know ahead of time where you're going to go. And so it's X number of pages. But when we get that, we have a sense of the stability of the company. And then, and we're not saying we'll only do one. But what happened originally was there was a couple of companies that received host community agreements from us who were never able to get their business, you know, going. Mm -hmm. So we had host community agreements that people weren't even using. And I mean, that's a lot of work for the staff to keep track of all that. So I think this is gonna be a good process going forward that, you know, once or twice a year, we're gonna open it up and say, if anyone is interested in coming to Lakeville, 
you know, fill this out and that way we have some sense of who the company is, what their experience is, and, you know, we can go from there. So that way we know whether they have a better chance of actually getting their um, license from the Cannabis Commission. So, so lots of changes there too in three years. <laughs> well, that's good. You'd save a lot of time and energy. Right. And the staff time. The staff time is yeah. important. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Next question. The Fire Department Town Office Feasibility Study, which explores the possibility of construction, constructing a new facility for each or both combined, is currently underway. Uh, what is your opinion about this project? What is my opinion about this project? So, I, I read the 2006 feasibility study. Um, so this is something that's been going on for a while. Um, the 2006 study, I think, was brought up again in 2016, 2017. I think when we started discussing the police station building. Yeah, that would so, make sense. Yeah. Um, so again, at that time, creating, building a police station building was what was decided. So even though I was fortunate enough to be a select board member when we did the ribbon cutting, which I enjoyed thoroughly, plus I enjoyed seeing how many families of the uh, police department uh, staff, all the you know police uh, police patrolmen and everything came by, came through for the tour, and I loved seeing the residents that came through. Um, I wasn't around for, I was on the Board of Assessors, but I wasn't part of the actual building committee or anything like that for this, for this building. And this building is a great building, but you're right. The town hall, we've overgrown town hall. Mm -hmm. We can't even have a proper conference room in town hall. So we do have the feasibility study going on. Unfortunately, we won't have, I think, um, their, their total results or conclusions before town meeting. So I don't think for this town meeting there's going to be any decisions made. Um, it may have to wait until the fall town meeting. But um, it's, it's my opinion. There's you know, a couple different scenarios that can happen. It's, they're kind of obvious. One is mm. we build a new town hall and we renovate the existing fire department. The other one is we build a fire department and then renovate the building to be town hall. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like there's a ton of different options. So it really is going to come down to seeing, you know, what the financing is. And I take it very seriously if we're going to have to ask for a debt exclusion because mm. I know that that affects people's, especially with the rate of inflation right now. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to be a you know select board member so I can I can make what I think is a good decision. If I'm going to ask the folks of Lakeville for another debt exclusion, I want to be sure that the money is you know we're going to be using the best the best use of everyone's money. So, yeah, okay. but we do have five people appointed to that committee right now. And then um, if there is a building committee, uh, then it will be, um, the, well, I think we'll add a couple of community members, finance committee member, whatever. So, yeah, yeah. so that building committee would be a few more people. Okay, do you yep. have any opinion one way or the other? Um, just from what I know, um, I think it's harder to renovate the fire department. Mm. Yeah. Easier to renovate it, to I, continue it as a yeah, building for yeah, people to work yeah, in. Because right now to. the bays are really small, which causes a problem with the engine sizes. And, you know, I, I find know. it amazing. I watched one truck back in once and yeah. I was amazed at yeah. how they can do that. <laughs> yep, yep. So if, you know, I, uh, I, I just wish buildings in general weren't so expensive, honestly, you yeah. know, but yeah. I, I think I'd like to see a new fire department. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. Next question. What is your opinion of the newly created town planner position? What role do you envision for this job now and in the future? And in what way do you envision this position interacting with the select board? So town planner 
Finally having a town planner, I definitely have to put on one of my accomplishment lists. If I was making a list of my accomplishments, that would definitely have to be on there. Even when I was on the board of assessors, so, you know, I was in, in town hall and watching and seeing, um, we definitely needed a, 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 needed a town planner. Um, I also chaired the committee for uh, the our Ari Sky, who's our town administrator right now. Um, and I read through 16 to 20 resumes that came in. Almost every single person questioned why Lakeville didn't have a town planner. Um, then when we interviewed six semifinalists, um, six semifinalists, all very qualified people to be town administrator with master's degrees in public administration and, and, and all six people in their interview said, why don't you have a town planner or are you getting a town planner? So anyway, so that's a really big deal for me that we were able to finally finance the position. Um, and the town planner is the person who works for the best interest of the town. They're the one who will look at these subdivision plans or commercial plans and make sure that, you know, we need a sidewalk there, we need this, we need that. They also help with zoning. Um, but more than anything, we never had anyone in town who was responsible for the oversight of the affordable housing numbers. So we will have this experienced person's opinion when we go into um, affordable housing agreements with developers. Mm -hmm. um, and by that, what I mean is um, we do have at least one development who their affordable units fall off the inventory after X amount of time. Um, and a town planner will tell you that when you're trying to remain a rural community, that shouldn't be the case. Those units that people are putting in should stay, um, should stay on the affordable housing inventory in perpetuity forever. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, forever, because once the units fall off, then that lowers the ratio. And we all, you know, if you don't know, the state requires us to have up to 10% affordable housing. And if we don't, then developers can come in and build affordable housing. And um, we need someone monitoring that on a daily basis, daily basis, making sure, um, making sure that, uh, you know, that person too would keep track of um, in the event they're not supposed to, they're supposed to stay affordable, but in some cases, you know, um, I don't think we've had any fall off, but if they fall off, then you, you know, then the town loses that. And then, you know, someone, uh, someone else would buy it for full price. So, right. you right. know, so right. definitely the town planner is here to protect the town's best interest. And how does the town planner interact with the select board? Um, well, he's answered every call I've ever called him and asked him. So he's really great um, just helping each, you know, helping the selectmen. And I've heard that from other people that he's willing to explain. So that's just like, you know, a personality of a good town, you know, town planner but also we will invite him to meetings if we want recommendation, because a lot of times the Board of Selectmen will get plans of um, commercial property or something else, and they'll ask us our opinion. For me, one of those things, especially for commercial, is parking. So, you know, now I have a person too that I can go to and say, you know, gee, can you, you know, give me some advice on this. Is there parking rules, you know, so to fill in some of the blanks, because I'm learning every day still too. Right. Um, but mostly he'll be working. I say he because it is a, you know, his name is Mark. He's a, a very experienced town planner that we hired. And for the most part, he'll be interacting with the town administrator. But if for some reason the, the board of selectmen, I'm sorry, select board, that's also a change since I became a selectman. Um, so, um, he'll um, he'll interact, you know, with us if if we if we need his advice. Okay. Yep. Saves you some reading. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> you can read some of those laws and things, and they're very confusing. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yep. For yeah. sure. I'm with you. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, next question: The Middleborough commuter rail is located a little over a half a mile from the Lakeville line. Because of this, Lakeville is considered one of the 100 communities 
to be affected by the new state rezoning law. What are your thoughts about the new state requirement for the MBTA commuter rail communities to rezone an area or a district for multifamily housing? So this is a very complicated um, topic. I think I've already sat in on four <laughs> meetings to do with this. Um, so what happens if we, if we don't agree to this is we are sort of um, cut off from certain funding. Some of the funding like Mass Works or whatever, we don't necessarily receive some of the other funding, but I believe the community compact grants, those are also affected in the last few, in the last maybe two, three years, maybe we've received a couple hundred thousand dollars through community compact to do things like, um, you know, get uh, money to work on uh, disaster recovery for our computer systems for, oh, okay. our, you know. So in other words, the state cuts you off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, uh, I know some other communities receive money for like, you know, road work and, you know, so it's different. Not each municipality qualifies for every. So right now, though, the I, I do know just from uh, meetings that I've been in that our regional planning partners, SERPED, which Southeastern Regional, um, they're working on, you know, like rebuttal questions to ask the state, could you help us? You know, they're also working on things too, like, well, that area abuts up to like the Namaskit River in Lakeville, you know, so um, we're trying to protect the water and water quality. So maybe there could be some exemptions for folks in rural communities like ours, where we have some of these natural resources. So I think the only thing right now that, um, you know, we would need to do is identify any area that we could put in that type of housing. Um, and it doesn't mean it's gonna be built tomorrow, next year, or even the year after. It could be years before. And I anticipate like a lot of other things that there may be some changes to that MBTA communities. You know, um, I was actually in a meeting with, uh, I'm on the MBTA advisory board, I'm the liaison to that. and. The train folks were telling us in that meeting they had very little to do with that legislation. So I do expect there to be some changes. changes. Yeah, and I do know that um, you know one of our planning board members at a meeting expressed you know the desire for the selectmen to say no to that. But that's really difficult for us to do too because then we're cutting ourselves off from any potential, you know. And again, I am definitely for open space. I am definitely, I think I am blessed to have my husband and I have our own three and a half acre piece of property our house sits on. And we always say that's like heaven on earth for us walking through our woods. Our kids grew up in those woods playing and, you know, but um, you have to weigh the good with the bad. And there's still a lot to, a lot to come from the MBTA communities, I think down the road. So yeah, because it's yeah. they just it's just been put out recently. Yeah, yeah. I think in by the by the time May, in May, I think we have to, you know, sign a paper acknowledging, you know, that we are, um, but nothing says we have to build, even in the next few years. So, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. That's good to know. Yeah, that's a good. That's a stay tuned one, as far as you know, I can tell so far. Okay. Yep. Uh, and you'll be happy we have our last question coming Yay. up. Yay. All right. <laughs> um, the Town of Lakeville, working with the Assawamsit Pond, uh, Pond Management Team, Senator Rodriguez and Representative Oral received yep. a $250,000 two-year municipal vulnerability planning grant, which I know you know about, yep. to address the invasive weed situation in Long Pond and the Namaskit River. Lakeville hired SERPED to do the work, and this part is good news. In light of this progress, Lakeville now has the momentum, momentum and available funding to deal with both the flooding and the invasive weed issues. In your prospective role on the select board, how would you ensure that this momentum continues? That's one of, I think at the beginning, I mentioned something like, I feel like I have unfinished business that I need to be here for. That's actually one of the biggest ones. Um, I, so I don't work 
for, uh, you know, I don't have a full-time job. I don't even have a part-time job. Um, this is what I do uh, for my, my work these days. Um, I attend meetings. I am on the phone all the time. I'm talking to our local partners. I'm talking to our state partners. And um, we even had our representative, Jake Auchincloss, who's our federal representative. Mm -hmm. He even came to town one day and I had, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with him. And I said to him that what we have here in Lakeville, the water, and then also the flooding issues, the weed issues, it's a huge resource. Governor Baker has come here to see this while I've been, I mean, Governor Baker's been here three times, I think, since I've been a select board member. Um, and he also admits, you know, that it's in, you know, the water is the drinking water for 100,000 people in New Bedford. In the same respect, it's in our backyard. So we need to, you know, worry about water quality issues. So this is definitely one of these things that I feel like I can keep making a difference. And I know I have made a difference because I was in a meeting last week with just a few of the uh, core APC, Aswampsit Pond Complex um, members without all the scientists and everybody else because they, they come sometimes to give us updates. And we met with Senator Rodericks and we gave him a list of the phases that we've come up with on what we can do to start um, working to try to prevent future flooding. We came up with a list of phases, including everything from removing silt to doing um, weed removal in the Namaskit. And the Senator was quite happy with the work that's been done, the decisions that have been made. We're going to start taking that to the local municipalities. So um, folks from SERPET are going to come to our meeting, I think Monday, to discuss it. And, um, you know, and, and, and I, I, my hope is that we can continue to get money through the state because Senator Rodericks and, you know, Representative Oral really like what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I just saw a list of projects that Jay, uh, representative Jake Auchincloss, the federal representative was able to get funding for, and I hope to be on that list. I had some great conversations with him. Ari, um, our town administrator and I had some great conversations with him that day he was here and, you know, he's like, you need to come with me. You need to come to me you know, with a plan and I will do what I can for you. So I feel like we've established a relationship with him and I really feel like, you know, we'll be able to get some federal funding to do some work, you know, on, on whether it be fixing the culvert on 18 or, you know, right now we do have $250,000 uh -huh. that was done for study, an additional $250,000 that was given um, to us through SERPED, the regional planners, um, to to do to remove weeds, which is what all the folks we we hear the we hear everyone around the lake, and we're and we're working on it. We really are. Sometimes it takes a little longer than we all like, but we really, really are working on it. Good yep. to know. Yep. Yep. Because the ponds can be a blessing and a curse all at the same time. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Well, this wraps up the question part. Um, would you like to make a brief closing statement to our viewers? Um, brief closing statement. Um, again, I just want to mention that, you know, I am the incumbent. I have had three busy years. <laughs> We've done a lot, including a pandemic. Um, I, I'm an open book. Um, if you want my opinion on something, give me a call. Send me. I'm on Facebook. My account isn't private. I can be found uh, on Messenger. I get messages from people all the time. I will always take people's calls. If I don't pick up the phone, it's because I'm either caring for my parents or some other reason. I never let it just go to voicemail. I pick up the phone because I think that's super important. I am a member of this community. Um, and I went to my first town meeting when my boys were young. So that was probably in the early 2000s. And I've been hooked to town government ever since. I would always go to town meeting. And when it was, and I always say to people, 
you know, not every board is as consuming or busy as the select board. We have plenty of other committees that meet once a month, once a quarter. If everyone did a little, not everyone would have to do a lot. So I just really, really, really um, have work that I, I think we've started that's terrific and I would really love your vote. Okay, yep. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fabian. And we really appreciate your time today. And just as a reminder to everyone watching, um, please come out and vote at the annual town election on April 4th. That's a Monday. It will be at the Loon Pond Lodge at Ted Williams from 12 to 8. Thank you.